Hey, so you know what question I don't think gets enough credit is, is what are your hobbies? You either give the shittiest answer ever, uh, which I'll go into a few later, or you actually do have hobbies and a person can actually relate to you and you actually tell someone about yourself. I think hobbies are hobbies are super interesting and it's like an insight into someone's world and when someone asks like what are your hobbies you you really have two routes to go you can either give them a generic ass response or you can give them something meaningful and give them a little bit of insight into your world and for me whenever i'm asked this question it puts things in perspective for me because I I think about like wow if I if I give a really bad response and I think back later like on the night about it um, I'm like wow I'm I'm do I have any hobbies am I devoting too much time into work or something like that where I'm like am I even am I interesting do I have a hobby that someone would find interesting I don't know but things I hear a lot and what I mean by shitty responses are like oh I go hiking it's like no no you don't Um, like when was the last time you actually went on a hike in in Vegas the most generic response that a lot of people say are uh, oh I like I like going to Red Rock for the day it's so nice there I'm, I'm like come on dude it's like it's 115 degrees outside right now and I can put a million dollars down right now that you haven't been to Red Rock for at least three months. And that kind of leads me to what is what is the time gap here where you can consider something a hobby? Like how often do you have to do it uh, for it to be considered a hobby? Can, can skydiving twice a year be a hobby? Can scuba diving in the Bahamas once a year be a hobby? What is what is the timeline here where where something's considered it to be a hobby or not and that's that's something i would i would like to argue for me i think it's i think you really have to do it in the last 90 to 120 days for something to be considered a hobby i think that's an appropriate timeline especially if like let's say there's an unexpected situation in your life that comes up i think 3 to 4 months is a good enough timeline for you to get through whatever that thing is and get back to your normal lifestyle and and pick up that hobby again. But the definition of a hobby is an activity that is done regularly in one's leisure time for pleasure. And done regularly is the keyword there, in my opinion, and holds a lot of weight in my point of view. I think it needs to be done on a consistent basis for you to consider it a, a hobby of yours. I don't think one to two times a year really really cuts it. That's just, oh, I did something interesting this year. I think you have to do it consistently for for it to be considered a hobby. I read something interesting a while back that said a person is supposed to have five different types of hobbies. And if you achieve all five of these hobbies, then you have the best shot of really having the most well-rounded, balanced, and fulfilling lifestyle. Here are the hobbies, ready? One hobby that keeps you active, which I guess would be like going to the gym or um, hiking, right? Uh, One hobby for self-improvement or learning, and that could be reading, um, taking classes, doing whatever, something that that you're learning and growing. One hobby for creativity, um, something that gets your hands dirty, gets you really motivated to expand in that realm. A hobby that is social, uh, so you're around different people um, learning new things about different people it's a group setting I really don't like these hobbies I'll never have one of these hobbies and then one hobby that makes money and that was interesting to me I thought like that was kind of odd I don't know many hobbies that that make money I guess you can get like doing an Etsy store or something Um, or I guess if you started like a YouTube channel and it eventually became monetized but yeah so those five hobbies are super interesting for me it's like i don't even have the time i feel like to really invest fully into one into one hobby i don't know how a person can find the time to balance out five different hobbies how do you how do you manage your way through that i don't know if 
you're allowed to like group some together. Like for example, if your create your creative hobby turns into your make money hobby, like does that count? Like who's I guess who's judging? But I thought that was that was an interesting little thing that's kind of always stuck with me about how you're supposed to have five different hobbies. I wanted to go into some of the hobbies that I have been taking up recently in the past year. I think they've led me to a more balanced lifestyle. I've I've really spent a lot more time thinking about my free time and how I want to use it proactively. Um, but yeah, so during the during the pandemic, during COVID, I really started making a lot of pasta. I thought it was interesting. I could uh, kind of get my hands dirty. It was it's not as hard as one would think. It's really it's just eggs flour and water. And sometimes you don't even need the eggs. You could just do flour and water. But I really liked it because there was a specific, it took me a long time to find a specific recipe and a lot of trial and error for me to find the the perfect pasta, in my opinion, the perfect texture, the, the perfect like grit to it as well. There's different types of flours you can use. Um, there's a specific like full egg to yolk uh, ratio that I use. Um, it, and then if you go like slightly over and you're like kneading the dough for like seven to eight minutes. You're like, oh man, like I know, you know if this batch is going to turn out good or not. And another aspect of it that I really like is that you're able to, I'm able to basically feed people. I like that other people can benefit from my hobby as well. It's not just me uh, doing something for me. I'm able to feed my family. I'm able to freeze it and give it to someone as a gift. I'm able to, um, really put in effort to something and give it to someone else and say, I did this for you or I made this for you. Um, but then I really got into uh, cooking more in general over the last couple of years. I guess I've expanded past pasta, um, started experimenting with different sauces. I made a roast last week for the first time ever. I've never made a roast before. So that was exciting as my fiance is a vegetarian. She's out of town. So while the vegetarian's away, the, the cook gets to play. So I, I had some fun doing that. That took like a long time. But I really like spending a Sunday and saying, OK, I'm going to spend three to four hours on on this. I'm going to learn how to make a, a new risotto or something on the grill or I'm going to bake something. But I like the idea of I can spend three to four hours. I can do other things while I'm cooking, like listen to an audio book, watch something. Um, I can really relax and be proactive at the same time. So that's a hobby that I really uh, enjoyed lately. And um, like I got into like binging with Babish and um, other YouTube channels. There's a, a Twitch channel that really just showcases like cooking shows and uh, super interesting though, but it's something I like to do. Uh, another hobby that I really haven't done recently, this was more of a like college thing for me, was I picked up a, a ukulele. And over the years, I, I got decent at it. And now I have like two to three ukuleles, but I haven't touched them in like the last three years. So that like, I don't think that's a hobby for me anymore. It was. Um, I, I don't think I'm musically talented in any way. But at that time, that was a fun creative hobby for me that... I was able to dedicate some time to pick up relatively easily. You learn a handful of songs and it kind of just sticks with you. But it's something that you could also do. Like, like I remember during the summers, I would just like kind of like sit outside or sit on the couch and just like fiddle around with it. And it was something to keep my hands busy, something to do. But a musical outlet, I think, is definitely a great hobby to have. And then I see this is a controversial one. Can playing with your pet or in my case, my dog, can that be a hobby? I think it is because you invest a lot of time in it, in a, in a pet, in an animal. And if so, what does, like, basically, I'm, I'm a dog parent, right? I invest so much time into my animal. I cook for him. I take him on walks daily. I play with him daily. It's like one of the happiest parts of my day is playing with my dog. We groom like bathe him regularly ourselves we we invest a lot of time uh into into our animal and we love him and he is a part of our family but that leads me to if so if like if being a pet owner is a hobby is parenting also a hobby just parenting in general 
I would argue that it is. And I don't want to seem offensive to parents out there. I love my parents greatly, but I kind of kind of caught you in a trap here, ready? So let's talk about the definition again. It's an activity that's done regularly in one's leisure time for pleasure. So it's definitely an activity. It's very active to have a child, I'm sure. You need to take them to uh, different things that they do as kids. Uh, if they have hobbies of their own, take them to games, take them to friends groups, things. You, you're constantly investing in, in your child. It practically takes up all of your leisure time. And being a dog dad, I am investing almost all of my free time into this, into this fucking beautiful little French bulldog that I have. And I'm pretty good at it. So if you ask me, it, it's that part of it. Yes, it's an activity, but it's a hobby. Next, I believe it's for, it's for pleasure. No one, no one forced you to become a parent. You wanted to do this on your own. You have definitely had some some good times with your kid, no matter how bad your kid is, this this child of yours, I'm sure, has has brought you happiness, brought you pleasure, which is part of a hobby. It's brought you at least some ounce of happiness that I think you've invested in and you've enjoyed. So yeah, I think I think parenting is it might be considered a hobby. You can break this up into different things, obviously, like is I guess a hobby could be walking my dog more specifically, but I don't know. I think I think technically being a pet owner is a hobby, so I would consider that a hobby of mine, but teach their own. This podcast, I think, is another example of a hobby. I've really been trying to focus on being more creative recently and channeling this creative outlet of mine. Uh, it's not easy to think of topics like this um, regularly. So I'm constantly actually devoting time to this. My editing skills, I'm devoting a lot of time to uh, to edit these podcasts, things like that. So that is really beneficial to me, I think, so far this year. The hobby that goes into an active lifestyle, I've really try been trying to promote that uh, within the last seven months. Been going to the gym regularly. Like I said, taking my dog on walks, just trying to be more more active. I don't, we're not big like couch people anyways. I don't think we spend a lot of time compared to the average person just like binge watching TV. Typically we'll, we'll watch a couple shows maybe at night. Um, on the weekend we're generally pretty active but or we're working or something but we don't just like sit around. Um, so I think that's that's good. Uh, but yeah, I don't know how, how a person's supposed to justify time for five different hobbies. That's kind of crazy. I think it's important to at least have one hobby at any given time to devote some time to during the week. For me, it's it's very calming. I've been reading, not reading, sorry. I've been listening to this book called Stillness is the Key. And it was a great book, definitely one of my favorites of the year. But he goes into, Ryan Holiday goes into all of these different leaders and discusses basically how they find quiet time and, and how they find stillness in the world to think. And a lot of them have, have different hobbies. And it was incredibly interesting to hear how these former leaders or um, just people of notoriety in the world dedicated their time throughout history. There are some amazing little stories about how previous leaders have spent their time. A lot of them uh, go on long walks. A lot of them uh, use their hands. Uh, there's there's some stories about how one person just like cut down trees. That's all he did in his free time is he would just go back and cut down dead trees, and it, it helped out the environment because then new trees could grow in that in that space. And then he would his family would like his daughters would do some stuff with the wood and and make it productive in that way. Some people throughout history were like laid down brick, very hands-on activity as well, but it like drained them and it like, it took out a lot of their, their energy or like it, it only allowed them to focus on whatever that task was. For example, it was so, it was a, like a, an easy to do task, but it took all of their focus that they couldn't really focus on anything else. And they were able to, in this time, just focus on whatever the task was. And that's what they would consider their hobby. Like this dude was just 
he would just lay down brick for hours on end. And eventually he, he built like a cabin for himself. But there, there are so many little amazing little stories about hobbies that these great people in the world have, have found. And I, I found it really interesting and that's how they just found stillness and that's how they found um, peace in the world with themselves. And uh, these people at the time just had so much, had so much going on. They were able to just find this clarity. I remember specifically in the book, he goes into JFK and talks about, talks about like during the Cuban Missile Crisis, how he would find clarity. And, and they looked back on like his, his meeting notes and he would be like doodling specific words. And that's how he just found this clarity was by strictly just by doodling. And that was like, that was a hobby of his. And that's how he stayed focused. And I like that a lot because I, every meeting I'm in, my, my paper is just constantly, there's just like, crap all around the sides and the borders of the paper and by the end of the meeting it's like you look at my paper and it's like I I didn't pay attention the whole time but I really I really was it allowed me to focus and allowed me to stay engaged and uh I guess that's that's a hobby of mine as well but yeah amazing amazing book definitely a a great listen I think I'm going to most likely listen to it again but yeah so I've I've hit like over 20 audiobooks so far this year and for me that's that's a really big deal but I definitely want to at the end of the year I think rank a lot of these different books and, and do a do a podcast on that as well I think listening to audiobooks has been a huge hobby of mine over this past this past seven months I set out a goal to really focus on self-improvement and growth and I think that has been an amazing outlet for me. It just allows me to reflect a lot more, to think about how, I mean, I'm, I'm really listening to a lot of like biographies or like, I, I really don't like the term, but like self-help books in a way, I guess. Um, I think it just sounds like, it sounds cheesy or like a cry for help. Like I'm looking for seven ways to m improve your life or whatever, but I don't really like that. But it, it has, provided me a lot of clarity and allowed me to reflect a lot. And I think it's a really worthwhile hobby of mine. So really glad that I'm taking that up. Yeah. So this year I've been focusing a lot on hobbies and next time someone asked me, uh, so like, what are your hobbies? I do not want to be like, Oh, I go to, I go to Red Rock all the time. I don't want to, I want to start a conversation out of it. And I don't, I don't want to think back and be like, Oh, I devote too much time to work. I actually want to I want to tell someone, hey, like this is this is me. This is what I've been focusing on, and, and start a conversation that way. Yeah, I think that's that's really it. It's been a super super stressful stressful week, and I'm trying everything in my power to make time for a hobby like this. Finished this massive massive project that I've been working on. Very happy that it's done. Forty nine days exactly. It was. I had some very very long weeks. Very heated heated days um but I'm, I'm happy i'm proud of the work that i did i'm glad i'm glad glad i got through it tomorrow i'm actually heading to la to uh pick up my fiance so glad i've also got through this three week period without her it was not not an easy thing to do but um, i managed to stay to stay focused stay on task uh things like going to the gym or meditating or um, just being really diligent with my time. I, I managed to, to do a good job on that. I knew I would kind of fall off a little bit, but I did a good job. I think I overall, I'm proud of myself for, for how much I really stayed proactive and I didn't just like sit down and waste a lot of time. After LA, uh, spending just one day there to grab all her stuff, pick her up, Heading over to Oregon for a for a buddy's wedding, which I'm I'm looking forward to. It's just the, all this busyness. Like I, I really like routine, and this is just a very busy next four days for me. So I'm kind of stressing out about it. But um, I'll be to see some to see some old friends will be good. A lot of guys from college I'll I'll see for the first time um, in a in a few months. So looking forward to that. I also proposed in Oregon. Um, love love the state i right now like i said in vegas it's it's literally 115 degrees right now and it's like you walk outside and for in the first five seconds you're like i can feel 
I can feel myself getting a sunburn and I've only been outside for, for a minute. So it'll be nice to get out of the heat, definitely. Uh, I think they're getting married on like a waterfall on a, on a gorge, on the Columbia River Gorge. So it'll be super pretty, super excited. And one other kind of exciting thing is a coworker of mine was able to snag some uh, some mushrooms for me, some magic mushrooms. So I've never done mushrooms, kind of excited for it. I think I'll probably do them in the next two weeks. So uh, definitely we'll be having a uh, podcast episode about my experience. But I'm that is kind of something I'm very excited about. I've never really done a psychedelic before. I've only really have stick to cannabis. So uh, I've, you, I don't know if use cannabis, is that the correct? I, uh, cannabis is, has been a very helpful tool of mine for the last probably two years. Um, helps me sleep, helps me decompress a lot. But yeah, I'm kind of excited to really see what mushrooms is like and kind of compare the two, I guess. Everything I've, I've heard so far is like, you need to be in the right mental space to do this. You need a a sober companion or someone else with you. Uh, so I do think I am in a good, I think I'm in a good mental space to do this finally. I think I'm, I'm ready to kind of take on this fun little three to four hour adventure and, and see what happens. Uh, I've heard a lot of different things about what I should do during my time. So um, I'm excited to, to see what I actually do and see what comes of it. But, but yeah, so the stress is, I think, is finally is finally coming to a to a close. Hopefully, in the next um, few days, I think I'll be able to to really calm down and enjoy my experience uh, in Oregon and and see some good friends. Uh, I'm not a big fan of socializing, but I know everything's everything's gonna work out. Everything's gonna be okay. Uh, I'm excited to see my fiance, which I haven't seen in, in a couple weeks. So, all good things to come. Uh, thank you for spending your time with me. I appreciate it. Uh, This is an amazing hobby for me, and I hope you can find an amazing hobby that brings you a lot of joy. Thank you, I appreciate it, and I'll talk to you soon. 